Friends, welcome to our fifth week of Worship from a Distance. We're so thankful that even though we're apart from each other, we're not apart from the Lord. He is the God who is with us and who is constantly offering us life. Remember that though this is a Sunday after Easter, this is no less a day of resurrection than was last Sunday. We set aside every Sunday to worship the Lord, to remember that it was on a Sunday that our Lord was raised from the dead. Beth and I are so encouraged as we hear reports of your love and care for each other during these days. Jesus told us that it was our love for each other that would be the hallmark of our faith in him. So thank you for doing that so well during these days. May our love for each other bind us together today, even as we join our hearts and spirits in worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear now the words of the call to worship as we prepare to worship our risen King. Come, let us give thanks to the Lord with all our hearts. Let us tell of his wonderful deeds. Be glad and exalt the Lord with us. Sing praises to the name of the Most High God. Let's join our voices together as we sing songs of praise.
morning, families. I pray you are all doing well. I know this time is such a weird time that we are living in. However, know that we are praying for you all here at Grace. And are we not so grateful to God that we have technology to help us see one another and still be able to worship together? I am definitely thankful for the technology and for those who know how to run it. I am a people person and this helps my spirit for sure. And I hope it helps your spirit too. Today we are going to learn about worry. You see, Jesus does not want us to worry. He wanted us to bring those worries to him. Let me share a video with you so you can see what Jesus is talking about. This is thankful. Don't worry. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus did many amazing things. He taught everyone about God's love, healed people from their sickness, and even calmed storms. One day, Jesus was speaking to thousands of people. Hey, Jesus! When someone asked him about money, he told them a story and tried to explain to the people that our treasure is not on earth, but in heaven. Then he turned to one of his disciples and said, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear, for life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Uh, I guess. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, because God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to God than any birds. Uh, yeah, I think so. Do you think that by worrying about anything, you can add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't do a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? That's a good point. Look at all the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, the great king of Israel, in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown away tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. And don't worry about what to eat or what to drink. Hey, okay. Many people worry about these things, but God already knows what you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, for it makes God happy to take care of you and give you his kingdom. So share what you have with others and give to those who need. There you go. Thank you. Sorry. Hi. Then you'll be storing up treasure in heaven. And when your treasure is in heaven, it's gonna be safe. No thief can steal it. Whatever. And no bug can destroy it. Man, whatever. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I hope watching that video you learned a little something about worrying. I thought in showing you the video you would see it better in your mind. You see, God loves you. He says if there are things that you need, go to him. It makes him happy to give them to you. Do you remember in the video, the two little birds on the roof? Well, he says if the birds get food every day, won't he feed you and provide for you that much more? You are way more important to him than birds or flowers. So how do we get rid of worry? We need an action plan, right? Well, kiddos, we must learn to pray and to trust. And we trust when we know his word and we memorize it. I would challenge you to read your word and take a scripture a week that you can memorize. Read a chapter and see what stands out to you. Ask God to take that scripture and write it on your heart. His word is active and living and it will chase away the worry when we apply his lessons in the word and when we understand how much he loves us. So right now, what is one thing that you are worried about? Well, write that down and ask God daily to take the worry from you. Memorize the scripture as a family. I do post-it notes and I place them everywhere. They're on my car, my mirror in my bathroom, my computer, my wallet, so that it is always in front of me until I have it memorized, until it is written on my heart. I even have one on my washing machine. In order to combat worry, we need hope. Here is two scriptures on hope. Pick one and memorize one this week. Write it everywhere until it is written on your heart. 
Well, Romans 15, 4, it says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Well, right there it says that these things, these things were written for our learning. Guess what that means? We need to know his word. This book is a life manual, and we need to know it. Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I think that is an amazing scripture to memorize this week. Well, let me pray for you. Sweet Heavenly Father, your love for these children is more than we will ever understand. As your word says, even more than the birds of the air and the flowers. We thank you, Lord, that you love families. We thank you and praise you that you are their provider and that they can bring their worries to you. Now, Father, would you take these families and help them to learn your word for their life. Help them to seek you for their needs and wisdom for their lives. Father, forgive us all when we have worried and did not place our trust in you. We love you and we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may I bless you. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to invite you to respond right where you are as I lead us in prayer today. After each section, I will pause briefly for you to add your personal prayers and then say, Lord, in your mercy, and your response will be, hear our prayers. Let's practice that once. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our call to prayer comes from Psalm 5, verses 2 and 3, which says, Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. Let's unite our hearts in prayer. We praise you, gracious God, our creator, for your handiwork and creation. We thank you for the beauty all around us, for the miracle of life, and the wonder of experiencing your blessing each day. We thank you for the gifts you have given to each of us that allow us to create and to offer gifts of love, compassion, and care to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you for the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into our world to love us and die for us so that our sin could be forgiven. We thank you for his eternal life-giving resurrection from the dead and for the hope we have in him. We pray today by name for loved ones that do not yet know new life Jesus offers to all who will turn to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who abides with us, working in us and through us to accomplish what you want. We yield to him again today. We invite your spirit to come more fully into our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray today for those who are sick, whether from the coronavirus or other causes. Bring healing and wholeness to bodies that are weak and needy. We pray for those who are dying, for those who have recently lost loved ones. Instill within each heart the resurrection hope found only in our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are serving others on the front line in this time of great need, those in the medical field, doctors and nurses and technicians, for first responders, for EMTs, for firefighters and police officers, for those who are serving in our military, whether stateside or abroad, for those who continue to work in places of potential exposure to the coronavirus. Lord, protect each one, protect their families, provide for them and their families, and bless them even as they bless others.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for governmental leaders and leaders who have responsibility for the overall health and well-being of our country. We pray for leaders in other countries around this globe who are also working hard to corral this virus. We pray on all fronts for good decisions to be made. We pray against those who would politicize COVID-19 and divide our leaders rather than keeping them working closely together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who have suffered last weekend with loss of life and property due to the storms in the South. We pray for healing for the injured and for comfort for those who have lost loved ones, for communities to pull together in the cleanup and rebuilding process, for the Church of Jesus Christ to step forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for our families, for our church family, for the health and well-being of individuals and of the community of Christ followers in Decatur. Draw us together by your spirit. Draw us together in your love. Draw us together for your purposes, that this might be a time of spiritual awakening in the lives of many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the privilege of prayer, we thank you. And for the privilege of praying together the prayer you taught us, we rejoice even as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May it be so, Lord. So the scripture for this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 24 through 34, where our Lord Jesus says this, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Greetings, friends. In the name of our risen Lord Jesus the Christ, I pray today as we approach perhaps a really familiar passage in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, that our ears and our eyes will be open to the new thing that Jesus will speak to us for the times in which we live. Let's ask the Lord together that the Holy Spirit will help us hear something that meets each one of us right where we are today. Will you quiet your hearts with me as we ask? Let's bow in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word that you've preserved through all the centuries so that we can read it and reread it and learn and grow by it every day. 
thank you that no matter how many times our eyes fall upon a passage or a promise, you make it new as we ask you to enrich our understanding. So we ask, Lord, whether we have heard these words many times before or they are fresh and new to us, we pray that your spirit will speak through them into our current circumstances and the condition of our hearts. Holy Spirit, enable us to respond to what you speak and to live according to your promises for the sake of your glory and the effectiveness of our witness in your world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The title of today's message is, What Would Jesus Say When We Wonder If We Have Enough? Now, I imagine as you heard Sig read Matthew 6, 24 through 34, that one of the words that stood out and drew your attention was worry. We tend to worry when we aren't sure we will have enough, don't we? The Greek word for worry, which is used six times in that passage, means to take thought, to be anxious, to be perpetually uneasy. Worry is an ongoing action. We work at it and it causes us to be distracted from what is most important. And it can cause us to feel like we're just coming apart at the seams, can't it? Like we just cannot hold our sanity together. Worry causes us to feel out of control when what we most naturally want is to be in control. Can you relate to any of that kind of feeling amid the coronavirus pandemic? It feels like few things remain in our control. We can't be together with those we love. We can't even go to the grocery store and be sure that there'll be toilet paper on the shelves. Some of us can't go to work. We can't count on our income. We can't send our kids off to school. We can't get away from the people we live with because there's just no place to go. Life has changed drastically in the last few weeks. So we feel out of control and anxious. We worry about having enough. Or the worry I can be tempted by is not being enough as a pastor to those we cannot see face to face. We tend to work for and worry over what is most important to us. That's why Jesus said in verse 24 that we can't serve both God and money. Only one thing will command our devotion. Is it the treasures of this world or of God's kingdom? When we worry over the treasures of this world, we reveal where our greatest devotion truly lies. And we will have a life of anxiety because the things of this world will fail us. Because we cannot serve two masters, Jesus says, therefore do not worry. That's what the therefore is there for. It isn't possible to serve two masters. Therefore, we must choose one. But Jesus doesn't simply command us to not worry. He uses some questions to make us think about worry and to help us draw our own conclusions. So let's look at those five questions Jesus asked, isolated from the other parts of the text. Number one, isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Number two, are you not much more valuable than the birds? Number three, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Number four, why do you worry about clothes? And finally, if that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? As we think about these questions, keep in mind the idea of how much more. That idea is found all the way throughout this passage. Jesus doesn't ask questions without purpose in them. He wastes no words. So what does he want us to understand as we take these questions to heart? First, Jesus directs our thoughts to the immense value God places on our physical life. Jesus asks, isn't life more important than food and the body more important than clothing? The gift of life we receive from God far outweighs the value of material things of this life, like food and clothing or anything else. We forget that life came to us as a generous gift from the hand of God. We cannot give ourselves life. God created us, gave us physical bodies, and then breathed into us the breath of life. The eternal and glorious God does not need human beings to make his life complete 
but he wanted to share life and his creation with us. So he gave us the gift of physical life and placed us here on this earth that he made especially for us. Not only did he give us life, but God made his human creation the crowning jewel of all he made. Jesus asks, are you not much more valuable than birds? Yes, we are. God formed every human being in his own image. To every human on the face of the earth, he has entrusted his creation and has given us an important role in caring for all he has made and in being co-creators with him. Those who are working on creating treatment and a vaccine for COVID-19 are working hand in hand with the God who created us to bring about something new that will bless the people of God's own making. God highly values our human life. And second, God pays attention to and tends to all of our needs. Jesus asks, are you not of more value than the birds? And won't God clothe you much better than he clothes the flowers of the field? God cares for all of his creation. He tends to the needs of the birds and he clothes nature in beauty, and he, but he values our human life so much more. God values our physical life so much that he became one of us in our flesh and gave his own life over to death to save us from the brokenness of sin. It's sin that keeps us from being all God has created us to be and twists our value system, causing us to worry and to war against one another and to worship the idols of this broken world. Jesus died for us and conquered death in his resurrection that we just celebrated this last week so that we might overcome the power of sin in our everyday lives. That's the most important need we have, to be set free from the power of sin and death. The power of sin in the grave has been broken. Sin no longer controls those who trust in Jesus. If God values our human lives enough to die for us, will he not tend to our needs even better than he does the needs of the birds and the flowers? Yes, of course he will. In Matthew 10, 29, Jesus says that two sparrows are so cheap that they're sold for a single penny. Yet not one sparrow falls to the ground without our Heavenly Father knowing it. If that is so, don't you think he sees and cares about every tragic thing that touches our human lives, like the coronavirus? Yes, he does. That which has greater value receives greater care. That's true in our own relationships, isn't it? I tend to the needs of the human beings I love with much greater care and diligence than I tend to the needs of the fish in our pond or the birds in our yard. God sees to it that the birds have everything they need for food and to build their nests and to find shelter in the storms. They don't have to wonder where any of that comes from. It's just there. Won't the Lord do the same and more for us? Yes, he will. Does he not clothe nature with gorgeous color and amazing resilience? Just look out your window on these spring mornings and you'll see that the answer is yes, he does. If he does that for birds and flowers, then he will see to every one of our needs in much greater measure. The value God places on our lives and the care and attention he gives to our needs does not mean that we won't face trials and hardships. We live in a fallen world where everything and everyone has been infected with the virus of sin. Now, we don't want to experience the consequences of a fallen world. We don't want to suffer or struggle. So when trials come, we look around for where we might place the blame and, or we look around to see how we can medicate our pain or we wring our hands in worry. In contrast to our desire to avoid it, God knows it's through the fiery trials that our faith is strengthened. We actually have a need for those things which tempt us to worry. When we resist that temptation and turn our full attention upon Christ and his kingdom, we're like gold being refined in the fire or wood being made useful and beautiful by the ripping of the plane and the smoothing of the sander. It isn't pleasant, but it is effective for revealing in us the beauty of God's kingdom. When we seek first his kingdom, we get the kingdom. Christ in us, our hope of glory. Jesus suffered for us because of our sin. 
He came through that suffering on the other side into resurrection life, glorious life that he now makes available to all who will trust him and give their devotion to him and his kingdom. Even in the experiences of trouble and struggle, we have all we need in Christ when his kingdom is all we seek. Because of the value God has placed upon his human creation, he uses everything that touches our lives in this fallen world, including that which tempts us to worry, to draw us into that gift of abundant and everlasting life he bought for us at the cross. Jesus asks, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And we know the answer to that question, no. As a matter of fact, the medical community knows that worry can shorten our lives. Worry can cause us physical ill health and mental anguish that can lead us to despair. Because God so values his human creation, he tends to our need for life. God has given us the gift of eternal, everlasting life in Jesus. Unending life is found in Jesus and fullness of life right here, right now. There's nothing we can do to have more or better life than what God gives to us when we trust in Jesus. Here's the bottom line. This passage today is not about worry. It's not about having enough of the things of this world. It's about the God who created us, who loves us so much that he tends to all of our needs and who gave his life for us so that in him we would have all things. We don't have the ability to grasp the enormity of God's love and the beauty of his plan for those who will put his kingdom first and devotion to Jesus above all else. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, quoting the prophet Isaiah, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no one's heart has imagined all the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And then he goes on in verse 10, It is to us, however, that God has revealed these things. In Jesus and by his spirit, we have access to the kingdom of God like no one living before the cross could even imagine. Jesus asks, why do you worry about what you will eat or drink or wear? The you he addressed at that time was the people of Israel, those who supposedly knew God and loved him. He addresses us today. Those of us who have seen his resurrection glory, why do you, followers of Jesus, believers in the one true God, worry about anything at all? In Jesus, we live in the kingdom of God as his beloved children. It's those who don't know there is a God who created them and loves them, who worry and work for all those material things. They set their hearts on the things in this world and do everything they can to accumulate and control them. But you, you must not worry about these things that are all passing away. You belong to and are loved by the eternal God. Just a few verses from where we read today, Matthew writes of God as our Father in heaven, who knows our needs and promises to continually provide all the good things needed by those he loves and who look to him for everything. I've recently been reading again a biography about Amy Carmichael entitled A Chance to Die. Amy believed God had shown her how she was to order life in a mission of rescue for endangered children that she ran in India called Donover Fellowship. One of the principles she lived by was that of not asking human beings for financial or material provision, but taking all of their needs directly to their Father in Heaven alone. The author wrote, Amy had experienced God's provision at other times in her life, so why not expect him to go right on doing it? Amounts were nothing to him, nor did he lack methods. If it took ravens to feed the prophet Elijah, God sent ravens. Why shouldn't he send ravens to Donover if he wanted to? If he feeds the birds and clothes the grass and the flowers, why not look for the same provision? Amy herself wrote, we rely upon the verses which assure us that our Father knows our needs, and we take it that with such a Father, to know is to supply. What does Jesus say when we wonder if we have enough? We have a Father, a good and loving Father, who willingly gave his own life for us. He will not overlook the needs of those who trust in him. 
who laid down the work of worry, which only drains us of life and peace, and instead invest our energies in living lives fully devoted to Jesus by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Worry empties us of life while seeking the kingdom of God will fill our lives with every good gift, the life of Christ in us, and the gift of eternal life in his loving presence. So stop watching the perpetual news feeds about the coronavirus. Spend more time listening for the Lord in his word. Don't put your hope and trust in government checks or even in a medical vaccine. Put your hope in the promises of God. When you worry about sickness or death or loss, or fi of financial security, turn to Jesus with songs of praise, like the birds that sing for no apparent reason. You have an eternity full of reasons to praise him every day. Give your full attention to Jesus and do the pleasant and rewarding work of getting to know him more fully, resting in him completely, and trusting him without a shred of worry. There was a man in ancient Greece whose name was Titadios Amarimnos. He was an idol worshiper and he was known for his famous worrying. But he came to know Jesus as Lord and he turned his attention to seeking Christ and his kingdom. His first name was just a first name, Titadios, but his last name was a title given to him after he became a Christian. It was from the word for worry, Marimnos, with the Greek letter alpha at the beginning of it, making it a negative word. So his new name as a follower of Jesus, a kingdom seeking person was Titadios, the man who never worries. May the same be said of you and of me, child of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are the Father who loves us so much that you were willing to give your own life for our sake. We thank you, Lord, that you have made all the beautiful creation around us. We thank you for the springtime that gives us the vision of that beauty and helps us to turn our attention upon you and to know that there is a creator God who has created all things for our enjoyment and for us to be good stewards of it all and that we don't have to worry but to turn all of our worries over to you, Lord. We give you thanks that we know that. We know it in our heads because it makes sense in your word. We pray that you will make it make sense to our hearts so that we can live it out every day. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of our isolation from one another, Lord, when those worries come, would you help us to have hearts that are so swift to turn to you, that we may with Titadios be called Amarimnos, those who never worry. Oh, may it be so for these dear ones who hear your word today and take it to heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For our offering time today, hear the word of God from Romans chapter 12, verse one. I urge you, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. May this time of offering fill you with great thanksgiving for all God has given you. He has blessed each of us, and truly spiritual worship is to offer ourselves back to him for his use, filled with gratitude and thanks. Offer him your bodies, your minds, your spirits, your wealth, your possessions, your families, your friendships, your time, and every other gift he has given to you. How thankful we can be that God always offers us enough. Always. He promises he will, and he calls us to respond. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts you've given us as our faithful and good provider. We trust you. We love you. And we offer you eternal thanks and praise, trusting that you will be pleased with our offerings this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
We hope you are blessed by the word today and that you'll spend this week looking for opportunities to apply it to your life as you and I become more and more like Jesus with the passing of each day. We're truly a blessed people who are immensely loved and cared for by our wonderful Savior, and we need to be sure to thank Him daily, offering Him thanks, gifts, and offerings for all that He has done for us and is doing in our lives. One of the great ways we can show our appreciation for Him is by obeying His command to give to support the work of the ministry through our giving and our serving as well. We have a variety of ways for you to give here at Grace that will show your appreciation and support for the work done at Grace and in the name of Jesus Christ. You can always mail your check, money order to our offices at 901 North Main Street here in Decatur, 62521. Another great and easy way to give is by using our online giving options. You can access the link at our website at decatorgrace.org. We'll see a button for online giving and just follow the instructions there. When you click the link, you'll be redirected to our Realm Giving platform and just follow the on-screen instructions to submit your gift. And then the other way is there's an app that's available and you can look it up. It's the Realm app, R-E-A-L-M which is available on your app store, on your phone, or your tablet device. If you have any questions about getting set up, you can call me at the church office. My name is Shane, and I'd love to help you get set up so you can start giving and supporting the ministries here at Grace. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Bye.